Hello. These are different times. This is an interesting time to be a mayor. This is a time where I think we can really make some change, and, and that's why I'm here. In the last week or so, in cities across our country, people have been coming together into both peaceful demonstrations and dangerous riots after a horrific video was shown where police officers that have now been charged with murder. Um, the death of George Floyd, along with many other victims of police violence committed over the years, has brought up a very public and necessary conversation around racial inequalities and an excessive use of force by our country's police. I think that this is a good conversation to have. I think to have a good conversation, people need to need to approach always with an open mind. They need to be able to listen and be able to consider new perspectives. They need to be willing to accept hard truths and be willing to change for the greater good. This is how we evolve, how we become better, by connecting to each other with empathy and curiosity. Um, I was born in 1978 in Dublin, Ireland, in the Rotunda Hospital. Um, there was not much diversity where I grew up. Ireland is a small island. Um, there's, there's more people just in Washington State than, than the whole country. Um, and diversity boiled down to me at that time, uh, Protestant or Catholic, that there wasn't diversity. Uh, my family moved to America at first temporarily in, in 1990 when I was 11 years old before we got the, the opportunity to, to get green cards and then citizenship. Um, we first moved to Atlanta, Georgia, and everything, um, the landscape, the people, um, ideas, accents, everything was, was amazing. Um, it was so different than anything that I'd ever experienced before, and I loved it. I still do. I think the the melting pot is the most beautiful thing about America, and at that time, to me, Atlanta felt like ground zero. Um, it wasn't until I was 13 that I started seeing some other sides, and I, and I first started to see your um, racial slurs and, and different stereotypes. I remember a classmate getting upset with me because I did not understand some of the references he was making with racial and Jewish jokes, racial um, and Jewish jokes that he was telling, and he and he thought. I was trying to make him look stupid by, by trying to get clarification on, on asking him questions when I genuinely just didn't understand what he was saying. I remember thinking after, you know, he probably felt stupid because it was probably the first time he'd ever articulated what in fact he was saying. Uh, later on in Atlanta, I began to learn more about race and more about the history of race in the South and in America. And at some point I came across Jane Elliott and, and her work as a teacher and a in a project she did called the Blue Eye Brown Eye Experiment. Um, and what she did was she divided the children into um, into two different groups. There was, it was a third grade class, they were all white, um, and she divided them by eye color. And then she told the children that the people with brown eyes were smarter, they were faster, they were better, and, and those with the blue eyes were, were not. Um, and uh, it's a fascinating experiment, and it, it just it highlighted how prejudice is learned. Um, it's a learned behavior. and and. I remember actually finding the experiment a little bit disturbing to watch at first because it was it was kids and you could see how the experiment was negatively affecting them. Um, but then I remember thinking like that's actually life for a lot of people every day. And 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 again, it, it um, it's a good video to watch if you want to check it out. It's um, again, it's an experiment by Jane Elliott called the Blue Eye Brown Eye Experiment. But it was very it clearly helped me understand racism from a different perspective. Um, and throughout history. We as humans have always found ways to divide ourselves. Um, I am also human. I understand biases. I understand prejudice because I have them just like everyone else. Uh, but the more we can become aware of them, uh, the less we have to be limited by them. And, and I like Jane Elliott's mission. Um, it's, it's two words, one race. Um, and she's referencing the human race. I, I, think, I, think it's, I think the sooner we can evolve to that point, the better it will be for all of us. Um, I think... The simplest, most boiled down answer to, to so many of the problems that, that have come to center stage right now is just getting to know each other, uh, respecting each other and, and being curious about each other, seeing and acknowledging that the other person is just as valid as you, um, just another version of you. As a community, it is vital that we maintain an environment where everyone feels welcome and is given an opportunity. I remember uh, when I was younger, uh, I'd gotten pulled over by police at least 10 times. I remember I got to double digits before I got my first speeding ticket. And I would pride myself in the different ways I was able to convince the officers to let me go in my way. 
Um, I'm a good talker and and uh, and could usually get out of it that way. Um, and I've been thinking about that lot lately. Um, I had a conversation this week um, with a coworker from my uh, from my other full time job, and um, it was talking about um, race and what's happening in America and the world right now. And it was a it was a real conversation, and it, and it felt it felt good. Uh, we talked below the surface for a while, and and he brought us both the tears as he emotionally recounted the fear he had felt wondering uh, as a black man when he gets pulled over by the police whether he, he's going to make it home to his daughter um and and uh, it it was it was touching i mean he he knows the majority of cops are good he's just worried that he's going to get one of the bad ones um and, and all the times i got pulled over not once did i ever worry about my own safety never worried if i was going to make it home to my kids um this man and i have had very different experiences in life, and we both can learn from each other. Um, and at the same time, I recognize it's complicated. Um, you know, I recognize how scary it could be for a police officer to walk up to a car with a feeling like they might not make it home back to their family. Um, I think communication is the key. Uh, without it, nothing can be solved. We don't choose what kind of body we're born into. Um, this is the body that I was born into, the family that I was born into, the era that I was born into. I can't change any of these things about me, um, but I can choose the things I want to expose myself to, uh, the experiences I want uh, to take on that help define me, uh, learning from people with different backgrounds, seeing the world through other people's eyes. That's really what defines me and I think defines us all. Uh, that's the part that I can truly embrace. That's the part I, I think we can all truly embrace. We, we all are individuals. Um, Lately, I've been having a lot of good conversations with Chief Lackey, um, and I've been, uh, we've scheduled a meeting for next week uh, to discuss the, the police department's use of force. And um, specifically, we're, we're gonna cover um, some of the uh, policies that were mentioned in the 8 Can't Wait website. So um, uh, I fully wanna understand how our campus police department's use of force addresses uh, the specific areas mentioned um, on that website. There are eight policies that can decrease police killings by 72%. And I'm looking forward to our conversation with the chief, and um, as I know he is as well. Uh, and I'll follow back up soon after that on, on what I've learned. Um, in the meantime, I, I would like to challenge our citizens. We just entered phase two, um, and uh, we can start to interact with people a little bit more. Um, and, and first, um, I cannot be more excited that we're in, entering phase two. And I wanna thank everyone for their commitment over the last few months. Um, and uh, I'm just grateful that we're in a place that both the county and the state officials believe it's time to start opening back up. Um, so while maintaining all of the, the state safety precautions laid out, my challenge for you is to reach out to someone in the next week um, that's different than you. I want you to reach out to someone that you normally wouldn't talk to. I challenge you to ask about them. Listen and share with them. Learn what their experience is like. It may be someone that looks scary to you. Maybe someone that has a different financial situation than you. Maybe someone that you may have biases based on the way that they look or dress. But I think this is how we can start to move forward. Uh, this is how we get closer, I believe, uh, to being just human beings. So with that, um, I hope everyone is doing well. Um, I, I'm looking forward to continuing this conversation. And I'm looking forward to talking with you all very soon. Thank you.